There we are. We are using synthetic division. And then tomorrow we're going to use it. I mean, we're going to really use it to solve a problem. A rather complicated problem. But right now, we're going to use synthetic division to find out if these two numbers, ne negative five and four, are really zeros of the function, of this function, f of x equals three x to the third, plus 10 x squared minus 19 x plus 30. Um, up until now, we have uh, uh, put, uh, we have substituted negative five for the x's, and then if the answer is zero, we know that negative five is a zero. Substitute four for the x's, and if the answer is zero, then we know that four is a zero. But there is an easier way, and that's what we're going to learn today. In fact, um, you might say, no, no, it's easier just to put negative five in for the x's. It's easier to put four in for the x's. Maybe, but as polynomials get longer and longer, um, your chances of making a mistake doing it using the substitution method gets greater and greater. So we're going to use synthetic division on this. So here's how you do it. We're told what numbers we're checking. Well, let's take negative five and try that first. Oops. Okay, that was kind of gigantic. Okay, let's take negative five. What I'm gonna do is put it in what I call a backwards L. And then I'm going to write down the coefficients of this function. So I'll write down a three and a 10 and a negative 19 and a 30. And the last time we did this, <clears throat> we were working with matrices, but this is not a matrix. So don't let that um, stress you. I'm going to, going to skip a line and draw a line. This line is just um, uh, this kind of line. Three plus two equals five. It's that kind of equals line. Ooh, there. Okay, so here's what you do. Once you have this set up like this, what you do is you take that first number and you bring it directly down, always. And you just write it there. That's all you do. Once you've done that, you take this number and you multiply it by the number in the backwards L, your test number. 3 times negative 5. That's negative 15. I put it underneath the 10, the next number. And then I add vertically 10 plus negative 15 is negative 5. Now I take the negative 5 and I multiply it by the negative 5 and I get positive 25. Put it underneath the negative 19. And then I add vertically negative 19 plus 25 is 6. 6 times negative 5 
is negative 30. 30 plus negative 30 is zero. And then I put this little dashed, or even solid, it doesn't matter, around that last number. The last number you get is called the remainder. Okay, when the remainder is zero, we're happy. I won't write that. When the remainder is zero, the test number is a zero of f of x. That is the number we're testing. Most of the time um, in college algebra, when you're using synthetic division, you're really, 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 really hoping to get a zero remainder and you're disappointed when you don't. It's not the only use of synthetic division, but it's a primary use. All right, four is our next test number. Four. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Three, ten, negative nineteen, and thirty. Skip a line and draw an equals line. Bring down the first number. Once you've done that, you multiply. 3 times 4 is 12. And then you add vertically. 10 plus 12 is 22. And then we multiply again. 22 times 4 is 88. Yuck. And we add vertically. So I think I'll get my calculator. Negative 19 plus 88 is 69. Now 69 times 4. is 276. And 30 plus 276 is 603. So my remainder is 306, which is not zero. So I can tell you right now that four is not a zero of f of x but negative five is a zero of f of x. So only negative five is a zero. And that is synthetic division. Super, super easy. Now we're going to use synthetic division to find a quotient and a remainder. Okay, if you're doing long division with numbers, remember that from elementary school, six into 315. 
I have no, I, I, my only assumption is that six will not go evenly in because I don't want it to. I just made that number up. Six into 31, well, six won't go into three evenly, but it will go into 31, that is, it'll go into 30 five times. Five times six is 30. 31 minus 30 is one bring down the five. Six won't go evenly into 15, but it will go evenly into 12. So six goes into 12 two times. Two times six is 12. 15 minus 12 is three. This is the quotient. And this is the remainder. OK, now what this is wanting us to do is divide the factor X plus 2 into this cubic polynomial. Well, we could do it with long polynomial division, which we did last week once, which was more than enough. Um, instead, we're going to use synthetic division, but there are two things that we have to do. First, we have to find our test number. Here's how you do it. What this says is x to the third minus 2x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2. So x plus 2 is being divided into x to the third minus 2x squared minus 4. And what we're looking for is what is the quotient And what is the remainder? Okay. Um, synthetic division doesn't work with X plus two. It works with test numbers. So I have to take this X plus two, put it down here, and set it equal to zero and solve for x. You do that a lot in math for different reasons. x equals negative two. Negative two is your test number. I'm going to put negative two in my backwards L. So you take the factor, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. That's the number that goes in there. Okay, I want to move that over. X plus two equals zero, X equals negative two. And that's how you got that negative two. Now there's something else we have to do before we can just get started. Look back up here at our cubic. Let me write it larger f of x equals 3x cubed plus 
10 X squared. Minus 19 X plus 30. I'm about to take my phone in the bedroom. OK, that's where it goes when it's bad. Notice that you have every degree represented here. Three is the highest. And then you've got a two, you've got a one, and you've got a zero. Remember that constants are all zero degree. So you've got third degree, second degree, first degree, zero degree. Whatever your highest degree is, whatever your largest exponent is, you have to have all of your lower degrees represented. Well, here we have, let me write it down here, and then I'll scroll up. We have x to the third minus 2x squared minus 4. That's degree three, degree two, and then we jump to degree zero. There's no degree one. We have to put it in. But I can't go around just adding X where it wasn't before. So I get around that by saying, okay then, I'll put in a zero times X, because what is zero times X? It's zero. And when you add zero to a number or to an equation, you don't change it. So that's the way we get around not having one of the degrees represented. So I'm going to write the coefficients to x to the third minus 2x squared plus 0x minus 4 as 1, negative 2, 0, negative 4. And then I skip a line and I draw a line. Now I'm just going to do normal synthetic division. This zero is in there as a placeholder. For the X, the X term that's not there. OK, I bring down the one. And I write it right there. Then I multiply one times negative two is negative two. Then I add vertically. Negative two plus negative two is negative four. Now I multiply negative four times negative two is positive eight. And add vertically, zero plus eight is eight. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. Negative 4 plus negative 16 is negative 20. And this last number is always the remainder. So let's write down the remainder. They're asking about uh, what is the quotient and the remainder? So I'm going to make a place for quotient. And I'm going to make a place for remainder. Remainder is easy. It's negative 20. but I need to explain the quotient. This is the quotient. 
right here. Remember that this was one X to the third, and that was the highest power. And then they went downhill from there. Well, once you do a synthetic division, the highest power you end up with is one less than the one you started with. So this is going to be one X squared. And then the powers go downhill, they descend from there. So this is going to be X squared degree two, X degree one, and plus eight, which is degree zero. It's a constant. So your quotient is going to be X squared minus four X plus eight. And that's how you find the quotient and the remainder. Now I think the next problem might be the exact same kind. So we're gonna do this again. Step one. Set the linear fact factor, factor, linear factor equal to zero and solve for X. Okay, that's going to be our test number. Now here, well, we have a number of degrees that are missing. What we need is, since the highest power is five, we also need a fourth degree term. We've got a third degree term. We don't have a second degree term. So I'm going to put zeros in front of these. I will have an X term, negative one X, but I don't have a constant at the end. I don't have a zero degree term, so I'm going to have to put a zero there also. So this is my fifth degree polynomial that I'm going to have to use complete with placeholders for the degrees that are not there. Fifth degree, fourth degree, third degree, second degree, first degree, zero degree. So I'll rewrite this as one X to the fifth plus zero X to the fourth plus one X to the third plus zero X squared minus one X plus zero. And that's going to give me my coefficients. One, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. Good grief. This is where my remainder is going to be, underneath the last number, underneath the constant. So I bring down the one. One times four is four. Make sure that's really a four. Yes, it is. Okay. 
I add vertically 0 plus 4 is 4. Now 4 times 4 is 16. Add vertically. 1 plus 16 is 17. Oh, rats! Uh, 17 times 4. 68. 17 times 4 is 68. 0 plus 68 is 68. <laughs> I hate big numbers. Okay, now 68 times 4. is 272, of course it is. Negative 1 plus 272 is 271. And finally, two seventy one. Times four. Is 1,084. 0 plus 1,084 is 1,084. Good grief. I, I complain. But it's still true that the remainder is the easiest number to find. I mean, it's not hiding, it's right there. 1084. Meanwhile, the quotient. This was when we started x to the fifth. But now we're working with a lower degree. One, one lower. Five minus one is four. So this will be x to the fourth plus four x to the third plus 17 x squared plus 68 x plus 271. That is my quotient. X to the fourth plus four, I'm going to sneeze. Where am I? Plus four X to the third plus 17 X squared plus 68 X plus 271. And I admit that was relatively difficult but it's nowhere as difficult as it would have been if you had divided x minus 4 into all that, because you would have still had to put your zero placeholders in. So that's what that is all about. Oh, so step one, find out what your test number is. Step two, put in any placeholders you need to put in. Step three, do the deed. And then step four would be to do what, whatever questions you're asked. OK, 
Okay. So these are the two basic kinds of problems you'll be dealing with. There are other uses and other kinds of problems that you use synthetic division for, but we don't really have time to go over all of them. So these are the two that you have to be most familiar with. Want to talk about these? Excuse me. No. Okay. All right, now we're still putting stuff together here. The graph of a polynomial function. The graph of a polynomial function is given, well, this was to the right, is given to the right. On the basis of the graph, answer the following questions. And I will help. A. Find as many factors of the polynomial as possible. Well, the factors come from the zeros. So what we're going to do is find the zeros and that will give us the factors. And then I'll show you how my math lab wants you to answer. So negative one, negative two, that's negative three. Negative four, negative five, negative six. And one, two, three, that's a four. And that's a five. So if I start listing these, you know, from the left, which is what I usually do. Z1 equals negative 6. Z2 equals negative 3. Z3 equals 4. And Z5, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Z4 equals 5. So that's the first zero, the second zero, the third zero, and the fourth zero. Now remember how we find factors. X minus negative six, X minus negative three, X minus positive four, X minus positive five. So that will be X plus six, X plus three, X minus four, and X minus five. And all my math lab wants you to do is not put parentheses around them, but instead just put commas between them for this first First answer, A. So you're warned ahead of time. Now B says, construct a polynomial function with the zeros shown on the graph. What they're talking about is putting the zeros through our favorite polynomial, uh, yeah, factor factory. F of X equals A times X minus Z1 with parentheses times X minus Z2 times X minus C3, times X minus Z4. And they, without telling you, want you to assume that A is one. 
OK, fine. So you're going to say f of x equals, and then in the answer box, Now, here is what you put in the answer box to A. Dumb, okay. That was a five before I marked through it. Still a five. Um, now, this is what you put in the answer box for B. X minus, no these now try again x parentheses x plus six parentheses x plus three parentheses x minus four parentheses x minus five I actually don't remember whether they want you to also put the f of x equals in there. You figure it out. That was rude. OK, then they ask you two questions, which you probably can't possibly know if your teacher doesn't tell you. And here it is. Is it possible to find any other polynomial functions with the given zeros? Negative six, negative three, four, and five. The answer is yes. You can find an infinite number. They would all have these factors, but f of x, but A, I should say, since the formula is f of x equals A times x plus six, x plus three, x minus four, and x minus five. By changing that A to a different number, an infinite number of possible polynomials are there waiting for you. Now D, is it possible to find any other polynomial functions with the given zeros and the same graph? Absolutely not. In fact, this is not the graph of that. Exactly. Because the A is not correct. But we don't care. We're giving them the answer they want. And in the next problem, you're going to see how to find A. So D, the answer is no. You cannot find another, uh, uh, any other graph with the same, I mean, any other po polynomial with the same exact zeros and the same exact graph. Because the graph depends on A. Now these will still be there. But how far up and down and which direction it the end behavior is in depends all on A, the leading coefficient. So let's see, I drew an ugly graph. 
I wanted you to see reality because in every problem we've done, it's been assumed that A is one. You can't assume that. And it annoys me. So here is my somewhat less than beautiful graph. Here are the zeros. And there's the Y intercept. We are going to find, yeah, we're not gonna do all the work to find the polynomial, but we're gonna find A, what the A is for this particular polynomial. I can't leave you, have you leaving this class thinking that A is always one, because it's not. There need to be more problems here that have A being other numbers. There, I'll run for office on that. All right, let's find this polynomial. f of x equals a times x minus c1 times x minus c2 times x minus c3 times x minus c4. where I I'm going to let this be Z1, this be Z2, this be Z3, and this be Z4. Look at the end behavior. This is a quartic, and the end behavior is up on the left and up on the right, which is just what it ought to be. And that happened automatically. I was so happy. Okay, so f of x, we don't know what a is yet. We are going to find it, but we don't know yet. x minus, x minus, x minus, and x minus. I have to look. All right, x minus negative 10, x minus negative 4, x minus 4, and x minus 11. Which will give us f of x equals a times x plus 10 times x plus 4 times x minus 4 times x minus 11. You need one more point to be able to find a. The most convenient and easy one is the y-intercept. But if you have any other point, you can find the polynomial. But we're going to use 0, 6. Now, 0 is the x-coordinate, and 6 is the y-coordinate. Remembering that f of x is just y, That means for the point zero six, y is going to be six, and all of these x's are going to be zero. Zero plus six, zero plus four, zero minus four, 
0 minus 11. So we're going to have 6 equals A times 6 times 4 times negative 4 times negative 11. And I'm definitely going to put that in the calculator. Six times four times negative four times negative 11. 1056. Six equals a times 1056. Now I divide both sides by 1056. These are both um, even numbers, so I am definitely going to math frack this. Um, okay. Math, frack, oh, clear. How about math, frack, clear? Um, okay, six divided by 1056, math, frack, enter. One over 176. So A is the fraction one over 176. Six, I didn't promise you it would be pretty. So now we know that F of X equals one over one seven six times X plus 10 times X plus four times X minus four times X minus 11. Now, if I really, 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 really wanted to see what this polynomial is, I would tell you, multiply all these factors together and then distribute in one over 176 and doggone it, you'll have the polynomial, but I don't really care that much. So we can leave it in this form and if I were to write this question, then this is what would go in the answer box. Huh, so there. Just to prove to you that in real life, a does not always equal one. And that's how you can find A. Okay, people, peeps, I've been told not to use ladies and gentlemen, but instead to use gender neutral terms. And so how about peeps? This is it for today so that you can go and study more for your exam if you haven't taken it yet. Um, and uh, I will. I will grade exams after I get up and walk around a little bit because I've been sitting constantly. For um, gosh, ever since 630. It's going to hurt to get up. But anyway, that's it. So, people who have questions, feel free to stay around. Uh, and people who don't can go ahead and leave and study for their exam. <laughs>